You know when you're in the mood for a podcast that feels like a warm hug for your brain? Yeah. The Inquisitive Wren is like that. Insightful conversations, those big questions. Like settling in with a good book. Yeah. Know, and a cuppa, something warm. Oh, and a friend who always seems to know the most interesting people. Exactly. And in this case, our friend is Shaw, the host. She's a holistic therapist and a spiritual medium. Huh. Based in London, by the way. Adds a little something, doesn't it? A little mystique never hurt. Yeah. But it's more than that, is how she brings it all together. Philosophy, psychology, even metaphysics. Right. Trying to understand ourselves and the world just a bit better. It's all over her YouTube channel, too. Mindful living, experiential growth. That's what she's all about. And not just throwing those words around, either. It's woven into every conversation, every guest. Speaking of, what a lineup. Actors, healers, therapists, even comedians. It's all over the map. But there's this thread, right? They're all on this self-discovery journey. Yeah. Figuring out what it means to be human. No small task. And Shaw sets the tone right away. She says, and I quote, This is not therapy, but I hope you find it therapeutic. Love that. Acknowledging that we all need help sometimes, but also there's power in self-reflection. Ready for a deep dive, folks. Today, we're tapping into our inner explorers with a YouTube channel that's got everyone buzzing, the Inquisitive Wren podcast. They're all about spirituality, philosophy, the arts, but, you know, in a way that just makes you want to lean in and say, tell me more. What's so cool about this channel is, like, they get it, you know? We're all searching for something, trying to make sense of this crazy thing called life, and they're like, hey, let's do it together. Let's share our stories and learn from each other. It's like a giant campfire circle of the soul, right? <laughs> Except instead of marshmallows, we're roasting big questions and insights. Exactly. And it taps into this thing, this social learning, where, like, our brains are wired to soak up knowledge from each other's experiences. Storytelling, it's not just entertainment. It's how we've always learned and grown as a species. Makes you realize there's no one-size-fits-all guide to self-discovery. All right, so today we're going to be... Uh, Diving into some pretty profound stuff, you know, like really getting down to the nitty gritty of what it means to find your voice. Yeah. And I mean that in every sense. You right. Know? It's like such a multifaceted concept. Exactly. Yeah. They have these really interesting interviews, right? Like they talk to all sorts of people, artists, healers. Oh, yeah. And scientists even. Yeah. They don't shy away from the big questions. It's really fascinating how they kind of weave those different perspectives together, almost like creating this tapestry of human experience. Totally. And and I love that they don't limit it to just, you know, singing or public speaking. It's so much broader than that. It's about expressing your authentic self, you know, tapping into those unique talents and sharing your story. Absolutely. And one episode that really resonated with me on that note was all about the power of sharing personal experiences. Yes, they were talking about how crucial it is, not just for the person telling the story, but for the person listening, too. Right. Like, everyone benefits from that exchange. I think they even shared an anecdote, something about seeing Whitney Houston perform really early in her career. Oh, wow. Imagine witnessing that raw talent firsthand, you know, before she was a global superstar. It gives me chills just thinking about it. It's like a reminder that brilliance can emerge from anywhere. And it kind of highlights the responsibility we have to nurture that potential in ourselves and in others. Totally, totally. And, you know, that kind of ties into this whole concept of self-care as a radical act, which is it's a pretty bold statement when you think about it. It is. It makes you stop and think like, whoa, why is it radical? Right. It's like in a world that constantly tells us to be productive and to achieve, taking time for yourself can almost feel like an act of rebellion. It's true. Like you're pushing back against these unspoken expectations and saying, no, my well-being matters and I'm going to prioritize it. It's about setting those boundaries, honoring your needs. Like you deserve care and attention just as much as anyone else. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes part of meeting those needs involves tapping into our creative side, wouldn't you say? Oh, 100 percent. And there were some really interesting perspectives on creativity in these podcasts, like that age old debate. Is it innate? Is it learned? Right. Like, are we born with these inherent creative abilities or is it something we can cultivate and develop over time? And I loved that interview with the actress who talked about using acting as a way to release pent up energy and emotions. That really resonated with me. It's almost like art becomes a form of therapy, a way to process experiences and emotions that we might not be able to articulate any other way. Yeah. And even if you don't consider yourself an artist in the traditional sense, I think the podcast really drives home this idea that we all have the potential to be creative in our own unique ways. Absolutely. You might be writing, gardening, cooking, whatever lights you up. 
you know, mm -hmm. the key is to find that thing that allows you to tap into that sense of flow, of being completely present and engaged in the moment. It's about finding what makes you feel fully alive, right? But get this, they also dive into the intersection of science and spirituality, particularly in the context of consciousness. Oh, yeah. That's a fascinating frontier. Like, they were talking about how even simple sensory experiences, like smelling a familiar scent, can trigger these vivid memories. It's crazy how powerful our senses are, right? Mm -hmm. And how much we still don't understand about the inner workings of our own minds. Totally. And it makes you think, like, what is consciousness, really? How does it all work? And they even touched on how modern quantum physics is grappling with some of the same questions about consciousness that ancient mystical traditions have been exploring for centuries. It's mind-blowing when you think about it, you know, like science and spirituality might not be so different after all. Right. Maybe they're two sides of the same coin, both trying to understand this fundamental aspect of what it means to be human. It's a lot to wrap your head around, that's for sure. And speaking of things that challenge conventional thinking, there's an episode on mediums that really piqued my interest. Yeah, that's a topic that tends to elicit strong reactions, right? It's often shrouded in skepticism mm -hmm. and, frankly, a lot of misconceptions. Totally. And I love that they address those misconceptions head on. Like they actually shared some of the emails they've received, accusing them of being, you know, in league with the devil and stuff. Oh, wow. It just goes to show you how deeply ingrained some of these beliefs are. It's wild, right? Yeah, it really highlights the importance of approaching unfamiliar concepts with an open mind. Even if they challenge our existing beliefs. Yeah. You know, what we think we know about the world is always evolving. Yeah, it's like people can be so quick to judge what they don't understand, you know? Totally. But anyway, they told this one story about a medium who was told they were, like, on the wrong side of the table. Can you believe that? What do you mean? So apparently someone told this medium that they should be the one reading cards, not having their cards read. Oh, wow. It's like talk about a limiting belief, right? Right. It really makes you think about how much we might hold ourselves back by, you know, putting ourselves in these boxes. Yeah. Like we might have all these hidden talents and abilities that we never even explore because we bought into this idea of who we are supposed to be. It's so true. We get stuck in those roles, you know. But speaking of exploring hidden depths, they also get into dreams as this pathway to self-discovery. Oh, yeah, that was fascinating. Yeah. Like dreams as this secret language our subconscious uses to communicate with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like what messages are we receiving in our sleep that we might be missing when we're awake? Exactly. I think they interviewed a dream worker who was saying how they were drawn to that whole field after having like these incredibly vivid dreams themselves. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like it kind of chose them in a way. But, you know, on its slightly different note, they also get into the topic of recovery, which can be, well, it can be a pretty loaded word. Yeah, it definitely carries a lot of baggage for people. Yeah. But they do a good job of like, breaking it down and showing that it's not just about willpower or, you know, simply wanting to change. It's about making a real commitment to the process. It's a journey, right? Not a destination. Exactly. And it requires, like, a lot of self-compassion, patience, recognizing that there are going to be setbacks along the way. And it's not just about, like, the mental and emotional aspects either. They talk about how true recovery often involves addressing the physical as well, like taking care of your body. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's about, like, treating yourself holistically. By you know? 100%. And you know what else struck me? This recurring theme of, like, challenging conventional thinking. They had several guests who really embodied that, you know, people who weren't afraid to color outside the lines. Totally. Like, <laughs> there was that filmmaker who basically threw out the traditional filmmaking rule book and was like, I'm doing it my way. Yes. And that really resonated with me because it speaks to this idea that sometimes you have to forge your own path, even if it means going against the grain. Absolutely. It's about trusting your gut, even when everyone else is telling you you're wrong. A hundred percent. Because those unconventional paths, they can lead to some pretty incredible discoveries. For sure. It's like... That's often where the real magic happens, you know, when you're willing to step outside of your comfort zone and embrace the unknown. And speaking of embracing the unknown, they also touch on this whole fascinating area of like positive thinking and its connection to neuroplasticity. Now, I'll be honest, I wasn't totally familiar with that term before. Yeah, it sounds kind of complicated, but it basically boils down to the brain's ability to change and adapt throughout our lives, you know. So it's not just like this fixed thing we're stuck with. 
Nope. Like every experience we have, every thought we think, it actually shapes our brain, you know, creates these neural pathways. Okay. So it's like the more we focus on positive thoughts and experiences, the stronger those pathways become. Exactly. It's like building mental muscles in a way. I like that. So it's not about like denying the negative or pretending everything's perfect all the time. It's more about consciously choosing to focus on the good even when things are tough. Exactly. It's about shifting your perspective, mm. you know, training your brain to see the possibilities rather than getting bogged down in the problems. And they had this great phrase. It was like experiencing without fear. Ooh, I like that. What does that mean to you? Well, I think it's about being open to new experiences, even if they scare you a little bit, you know, mm. because when we allow ourselves to step outside of our comfort zones, that's when we grow. That's when we create those new neural pathways. It's like expanding your horizons, right? And sometimes that means taking a detour, going off the beaten path. And, you know, the podcast also talks about how those detours, those unexpected twists and turns in life, they can actually be some of the most valuable experiences. Oh, absolutely. Like sometimes those detours, they lead you to exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Even if you didn't realize it at the time. It's like that saying, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, right? <laughs> but those unexpected twists, they become part of your story. Yeah, and those detours, they kind of force you to adapt and to learn new things about yourself and to you know, discover those hidden strengths you never knew you had. Exactly. It's like those experiences, they add so much richness and depth to you know who we are and how we see the world. For sure. It's like that's what makes a life, right? All those little twists and turns. It's not about following some straight line. Exactly. And speaking of like finding your own path, you know, it strikes me that this whole idea of finding your voice, it's not like a one time thing, you know, right? It's not like you just wake up one day and boom, there it is. It's a process. Totally. Mm. It's more like this like ongoing journey of self-discovery with all its ups and downs. Absolutely. And it's those those messy, imperfect moments along the way that, you know, they really shape us. Deep down, we're all wrestling with the same fundamental questions, aren't we? And you know what else I noticed? So many of their guests, they're drawn to creative expression. It's like this common thread, this urge to create. Yeah. There's this whole concept of finding your voice that comes up a lot. I remember one guest, an actor, they talked about this struggle, you know, like a part of them was hidden, waiting to be unleashed or something. That feeling, though, that you're not truly expressing who you are. It's more common than we think. Psychologically, it's like when we bottle up our emotions, don't have a healthy outlet, they can get well, stuck, finding your voice. Mm -hmm. It becomes about finding those outlets, those ways to let it all out. It's so true. Like when you know you should speak up or take a chance, but something holds you back. There was another guest, a musician. They talked about being terrified to pursue music professionally at first, all these doubts and fears. It takes guts, right, to really own your voice. You have to be willing to take risks, be vulnerable, authentic, even when it's scary. And you know, it's interesting, this whole idea ties into things like cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT, you yeah. know, challenging those negative thoughts, pushing past your comfort zone. Oh, I never thought about it like that. So it's not enough to just discover your voice. You have to, like, give yourself permission to use it, even when it feels, I don't know, a little wobbly at first. Exactly. And this musician's story, it's a perfect example. I'm curious, what was it about their journey that helped them break free? What gave them the courage to finally go for it? They talked about finding this amazing community of other musicians. It was like having this support system. Mm. You know, people who understood their struggles and cheered them on. There's something so powerful about finding your people, your tribe, especially when you're doubting yourself. It can make all the difference. Makes you wonder, though, what does finding your voice even mean, really? Good question. Is it about expressing yourself creatively? Mm-hmm. Speaking your truth. Or maybe it's something deeper, like connecting with your authentic self. Maybe it's all of those things and then some. What I love is the Inquisitive Wren. They don't try to give a single definition. Each guest, they explore it in their own way, which is kind of brilliant. It's like they're saying, hey, this is your journey. No right or wrong answer, just your own unique path. And you know what else I find fascinating about their approach? This whole idea of creativity. They had a whole episode on whether it's something we're born with, or if it's learned. That's a big one, right? It's like that classic nature versus nurture debate, but with a creative twist. It really is. And the inquisitive Wren, they don't shy away from it, do they? Not one bit. I remember this visual artist they interviewed said something like, uh, we're all born with God-given gifts. You know, those creative sparks just waiting for the right moment to ignite. 
definitely seem to be in the uh, born with it camp. It's a lovely thought. And there's some science behind it, too. We know genes play a role in certain traits, right? Like being open to new experiences or a little unconventional, things that tend to go hand in hand with creativity. So maybe we're predisposed to it in a way, but that doesn't mean we automatically become creative geniuses, right? Exactly. That's where the nurture part comes in. Think of it like, I don't know, a tiny seed. You might have the seed of musical talent, but it needs the right environment to grow. Nurturing, practice, surrounding yourself with music, that's how it blossoms. It's like that saying, talent without effort is like a Ferrari without gas. You're not getting very far, are you? Not very far at all. And the inquisitive Ren, they had this one guest who put it hilariously, talking about how their own thoughts were so boring if they didn't like actively seek out new stuff, new experiences, like their creativity needed to be fed or something. I remember that one. It was like they were saying, my brain's getting lazy, got to shake things up. Makes <laughs> you think, right? It does. And it makes me think about this idea of cognitive flexibility. Being able to shift your perspective, see things from different angles, make connections, that's crucial for creativity. Like don't stay stuck in the same old rut or you'll miss out on all the good stuff. Exactly. It's about cultivating that inquisitive Ren spirit, the urge to explore, question, try new things. And you know what? This exploration of creativity it kind of leads us to another theme they explore a lot, this intersection of spirituality and science. Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really interesting. I love how they don't shy away from those big topics. Consciousness, dreams, energy, stuff that we used to just chalk up to, like woo yeah. territory. But now science is actually starting to look into it. It's a sign of the times, wouldn't you say? We're finally bridging that gap between what we feel and what we can prove. For so long, science and spirituality were like two separate worlds. But now it's like, maybe they're not so different after all. Exactly. And the inquisitive Wren isn't afraid to, you know, go there. And then there was that other episode with the physicist talking about time travel. Can you Can believe that? Time travel from a physicist. Sounds like the inquisitive Wren. All right. What was their take on it? It was all about quantum physics and how it challenges everything we thought we knew about time. You know, like maybe it's not linear. Maybe we're not limited to moving forward. No, that is mind blowing. Quantum physics. It's like the wild west of science. You never know what you're going to get. It's like they're saying, hey, what if we've only scratched the surface? Maybe there's this whole other layer of reality we haven't even tapped into yet. It really makes you think, doesn't it? And the inquisitive Wren, they're not saying they have all the answers. It's more like, let's ask the questions together. Which I think is so refreshing, you know, yeah. in a world that's always pushing for answers. They're giving us permission to just be curious. And to find those connections, those unexpected intersections between things like, well, spirituality and science. It's like they're expanding what's possible, you know? Totally. And isn't that what being an inquisitive Wren is all about? Exactly. It's about staying open, staying curious, and never losing that sense of wonder. Because mm. who knows what we might discover when we do. Beautifully said. Trying to understand ourselves and the world just a bit better. So much of it comes down to who believes in us early on. But finding your true self, what you stand for, and having the guts to actually live it. Easier said than done, am I right? Because we see it with Shaw's guests, right? That fear of judgment. Like, are people going to get me the pressure to just fit in? Totally. Mm. And what I like is Shaw doesn't shy away from that. She mm. makes it okay to say, yeah, that's real. I feel that too. It's about facing those fears, not pretending they're not there. And she even talks about this idea of suppressed energy. Like, if you keep holding back, it's got to go somewhere, you know? Oh, for sure. Might look like physical stuff for one person, anxiety for another. It's all connected. And Shai gets that. Her therapist background shining through. Definitely. It's that mind-body connection, can't separate them. Our emotions, our spirit... It all affects her well-being. And she brings that into all these different areas. I mean, we've talked about creativity, but she's also got dreams, alternative medicine. Yeah. Even like the science of consciousness. Yeah, wild. It's true. A little something for everyone. Right? right. But here's the thing. It's not all serious, heady stuff. Even with those topics, Shaw keeps it light. Oh, yeah. Having those actors on, comedians, musicians, there's this humor woven in. It's a good time. It really is. You feel like you're part of the conversation, not talked at, you know. Exactly. And that's why it works. Not telling you what to think, but sharing, prompting you to figure out your own path, your version of finding your voice. Because in the end, aren't we all just trying to connect, belong, mm. especially these days? And the inquisitive Wren. It offers that in a way. That feels kind of timeless, you know, <laughs> like a virtual campfire, sharing stories, realizing, hey, we're all in this together. And isn't that comforting? 
just knowing you're not alone in those big questions. For sure. Makes those questions a little less scary, right? Yeah. And that brings us back to that idea of finding your voice. What does that even mean? Yeah. Is it like shouting from a mountaintop? Yeah. Or is it more like a quiet knowing inside yourself? Right. There's no one answer, is there? It's got to be personal. It's about what lights you up inside. And then the scary part, yeah, letting it out into the world. And maybe the inquisitive run is that little nudge yeah. to remind you to embrace your own voice. Yeah. Because it matters. The world needs it, you know? Your story, your take on things. Don't keep it to yourself. Couldn't agree more. So there you have it, folks. Looking for a podcast that'll make you think, make you feel, maybe even surprise you a little. Give the inquisitive Wren a shot. She'll take good care of you. Well, folks, there you have it. Another deep dive in the books. If you're as intrigued by the Inquisitive Wren podcast as we are, you know what to do. Go check them out. You won't regret it. And until next time, keep exploring those big questions and keep that inner Inquisitive Wren alive and well.